by Discharges Toastmasters International and UM Toastmasters Club from all claims, demands, rights, promises, damages, and liabil liabilities arising out of or in connection with the use or distribution of said video recordings and photo images, including but not limited to any claims for invasion of privacy, appropriation of likeness, or defamation. Next is uh, the housekeeping rules for our meeting. Uh, please have your video switch on throughout the meeting as one of the means of interaction with other participants. Uh, please keep your speaker on mute when you're not speaking. For guests, you are encouraged to uh, also for today, there is no table topic session. And uh, lastly, this meeting will be recorded for archive purpose. For any speech that requires no recording, kindly mention before presenting your speech. Now, I would like to pass the floor to our president, Jane. Over to you. Can you hear me, right? Yes. 376 meeting. Okay, so before we move on to uh, before we move into the team, I would like to thank a few of our external players who came here today. Uh, not sure. Okay. Our general evaluator, PM5, BC5, BL3, Graph Manage. Do you want to introduce yourself in a bit? We have done that. Yeah, I'm muted again. I'm very sorry. Very sorry. My name, as you know, is Ralph Menon. I stay in Suwang Jaya. I have been working around, working around. The one place I worked the longest was in Ampang, in an MNC company. I have been a Toastmaster for the last 12 years. and still going because I love it simply because it develops people in the in the field of communication and leadership. I believe that communication is the vital to understanding and peace. If you don't agree with that, think about it. Back to you. Hi. Thank you so much for the introduction. Wow, 12 years. That was has been a, such a long journey. Yeah. How many years have you been? I was still at risk to win them. So, how, how, how long have you been in Toastmasters? He's your double. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Who was? <laughs> okay, next. Uh, is that one here yet? No. Uh, is Vivian here? Oh, my, right. oh, uh, Vivian will be here at around uh, 9, 9 p.m. or 8.45 p.m. Okay. Here's a short introduction. Yeah. Hi everyone, Michelle here. And it's an honor to be invited to your uh, club. And we'd love to see what are the agenda for today. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's my third time visiting this club meeting. Look forward to all the woo-woo and the clap. And, the <laughs> and also will be one of the evaluators for today's meeting. Thank you. Okay, just now when June was in front of that, can we get when June was in front of that? Uh, I haven't, I haven't. Right? 
Uh, hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, I'm Wenjun. I'm from Jable GBS Toastmasters Club, and I'm the VPE for the this term. Yeah, I just came here to visit. Not taking any role, but just come here to visit this club. Yeah, this is this is my first time to see a physical meeting like this, and it's quite a space, very big space. And uh, actually, I came here to support some of my members as well. Yeah, so actually, the panel discussion. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Rachel, are you available to uh, have a quick introduction? Rachel will be joining uh, around 8.30 to 8.40. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Since you are in here? Yes. Okay, okay. That's a guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the stage. Quick intro about yourself, your name, where you come from, and how do you find us? So, hello, everyone. My name is Thomas and I'm from Tengganu. Yeah, I, well, I heard from, I heard about Toastmaster for a long time. So yeah, I'm just thinking of joining, exploring once to improve, improve myself. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Enjoy the meeting. Thank you. And we have another guest from Taiwan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right, of course. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Chi, and I come from Taiwan. And uh, uh, District 67, uh, Division Edge, Area 3, Area Director now. I just visit here just for a short stay, uh, just a, a week. Then I found uh, there's a really awesome Toastmaster Club here. <laughs> so I just can uh, It's really nice to meet you guys and people online. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So I'll call this meeting. Uh, and I will now pass the speech to our Toastmasters of the evening, Yuming. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jane, our president, for the kind introduction. My name is Yuming. And the theme for today's meeting is Constant Drifting, Where's the Stone? What's that all about? <laughs> so what's that all about? Constant Drifting, Where's the Stone? Could anyone give an idea? Resilience. Resilience. So why do you think this has something to do with resilience, my friend? Because the stone is uh, very hard. Okay. But the water, it takes time, but it can... You know, okay, thank you so much, those master Minka, for a very good way to conceptualize this statement. So, in a philosophical, philosophical sense, stone is a very hard material, right? It's a un unmalleable as it seems, it also can be worn down by the persistence of a dripping water. The water itself will not move stone. If it's dripping, won't do anything. But if you keep on dripping, it will wear the stone down. 
But honestly, I'm as a science student, I just learned big chemistry and realized that water is the most porous material on earth. So thanks for that science, you ruined everything. <laughs> now, let us start with a fun fact about Toastmasters International. So now since most of us Toastmasters should be aware that we're going to celebrate a century and 100th anniversary of Toastmasters International this year, so we know that it's definitely founded in 1924. Specifically, the date is 22nd of October, 1924, by one fine fellow, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley. So this guy, actually, he started working in YMCA Center, and not, for those who don't know where it is, what does YMCA stands for? Actually, it means Young Male Christian Association. Santa Ana is actually a, a place in the US, state of California. And we found out that there is a need, there's a need to meet for the youngsters to communicate well with others. That's, that's what motivates him to form the club. Now, here comes a very quick trivia. So what does the C stands for? I mean, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley, what does oh, C stand for? <laughs> Chestnut. How do you spell chestnut? C H E S U N U T. Yes, it's a chestnut without the T in the middle. So it's C H E S N U T. Okay. No, I, I, I have to look at the Wikipedia just to find this out. Yeah, it's not that simple. Okay. And the second question is this. So. Uh, when he got his doctorate, wow. when? 1934. <laughs> no, not 1934, I'm afraid. 1930. No, it's way after that. 1930. Uh, actually, the answer is 1950. Oh. In fact, he did not need to write a thesis for that because the doctorate degree is honorary. Wow. Because he, for his contribution uh, in founding the Toastmaster Club, he got the doctorate for that. Yes, Toastmaster make him a doctor. Wow. Okay, interesting. Now, now let's follow. Let, let's move forward to the history of this fine establishment, the UN Toastmasters Club. Now, we know. Okay, based on what I have known from the website, it's actually founded in two thousand seven by distinguished Toastmaster Vincent Hall with the support of the Center of Internet Internship Training and Academic Enrichment of UM. So basically, it's like this. There is one Toastmaster member from other club with the help with, uh, of, the, of the university department. Um, we call the Center of Internship Training and Academic Enrichment. And, we, and this is how UM TMC is founded in 2007. So for those who, in terms of the which month is is founded, such as April. That means that, spoiler alert, we're going to have an anniversary meeting next month. Yes, that's right. So please join us for a nice anniversary meeting whereby we're going to have games, which will be decided by our lovely president and her team. That will be lovely. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> okay. Now, that has a very quick trivia for you guys here. So, which club is Distinguished Toastmasters Wing Hall? Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, someone else, please. Someone else, please. Yeah. Toastmaster Kenner? Is there any? Oh, no, 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 my South Toastmasters Club. And the second question is this. Um, this one is a very tricky question. I think, uh, can someone give me five past president of this humble establishment? Okay, we come one. Who else? Can they? Queen Mia Hood. Kamun? Queen Mia Jeff. Okay, Queen Mia, yes. Okay, come on. Jeff, okay. Yeah? Kimi Lo. Ah, so I have more than five. Well done. <laughs> At least our uh, members here knows the name of the five past president. I feel so safe already. At least we know the history well. Yes? How old are we? Huh? How old are we? How old are we? We founded in 2007. Therefore, it's 16 approaching 17 years old. Oh. 
this month we will have a 17th anniversary. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, now let's, I'd like to go, move forward to the part is known as introducing the role, technical role players. So let us start with the one is going to monitor our usage of English language. Mm. Our English teacher. No, no, not teacher here, we're all lecturers. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I would like uh, Toastmaster T. Shiru to try get out on stage to introduce her role as a grammarian. Toastmaster T. Shiru? Um, I, I think I, yeah, I do. 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 Yeah, I do
I stands for interpersonal communication. Uh, I'm, I'm not liable for this abbreviation. It's Toastmaster Nicholas. Oh, okay. Toastmaster Nicholas. It's you. Oh my goodness. Okay, never mind. But it starts my head. I cannot get rid of it. All thanks to you. The second C stands for confidence. P stands for public speaking. The fourth one is M for management. And the last but not least, strategic leadership. So all the members will be tested by preparing, delivering speech, and doing the projects accordingly. Now let us start with the first speaker for today. Postmaster Albert yeah. is going to... Okay, thank you so much, Postmaster Albert. He's going to do level one, level one, writing speech with purpose with the title Self Improvement Paradox. Ooh, paradox oh. indeed. His evaluator will be someone writing online. Oh. Physical now. Oh. Yeah, someone kindly read out the purpose statement to the post, postmaster Alvin here. Uh, I, Alvin, hope you are doing great. So the purpose of this project is to learn or review these methods for writing a speech. It will define purpose and present a well as a nice speech on any topic. All of that means. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Zafwan. In fact, Toastmaster Zafwan is he himself is doing a level one evaluation and feedback evaluation speech project. So I'd like to invite his evaluator, Toastmaster Jason Tong. Uh, Jason, those master Jason Tom? What? Let's change. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't have to Okay, those master Jason, kindly read out the further statement to the evaluator, Zafan here, who is on your right. Yes. Those master Zafan, the focus of this project is for you to practice the life as well as speech value during the public meeting that we have for other topics. The other purpose of your project is for you to deliver constructive feedback on another member's presentation or speech. All the best. Thank you so much. Toastmaster Jason, for reading out the purpose statement to Toastmaster Zafwan. So, Toastmaster Albert, are you ready? I wish. Which, uh, you see audible up here and from the audio? Can you say something? Testing one, two, three, or something? Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Wow. Can anyone online hear him? Yes. Good. Brilliant. Now, Toastmaster Alvin, self improvement paradox. Self improvement paradox. Toastmaster Alvin, the stage is yours. Uh, do we spend the time this week? <laughs> one, yeah, one thing is that I would love to apologize that I'm very serious today. I forgot to change the car, but it's in my car, right? <laughs> so I start now. Uh, yeah. We are always heard that self-improvement is needed to be this way. A lot of times our parents ask us to work hard, to study hard, and to learn hard, but not to work, play hard. Why, why does this happen? It's because we, I do have to admit that in this, in our country, or in this Asian culture, our parents, we are born in this culture, and we do not have to differentiate to the Western culture. However, one time, just now when I was preparing my speech, I was writing my speech, I was preparing my script, I didn't know that perhaps sometimes we can play hard and work hard at the same time. That's one of the purposes that I joined to Master to learn about it as well, because I did not find any fun in studying. Mr. Contact Chair, Evaluators, uh, fellow and fellow Tools Master, what is the purpose of all self-improvement? According to Mark Manson, an American author and blogger, the purpose of all self-improvement is to reach a point where you no longer where you no longer feel the need to improve yourself. And this is where I disagree. The purpose of self-improvement is not to satisfy, it's, it's not to feed yourself when you feel hungry, to satisfy some urge when you feel that this is to satisfy some urge 
that you find yourself having that just won't stop bothering you until you are hooked. In my own definition, the purpose for self-improvement is that we are, we are told to be self-improved. Sorry. The purpose of self-improvement is that to improve constantly in life, to enhance the quality of life. And this means it never stops, at least when we are still living. We are told that to strive for excellence and growth is admirable, yet we must also learn to be compassionate with our better self. That sometimes when you find yourself working too hard and nothing goes on and no progression, but you must at the same time to give yourself the full sum of the reward according to what you have done and the hard work that you have paid off. Athletes train for hours and hours each day and in each week, pouring every last ounce of energy into the pursuit of mastery. They never contend with their current life, current ability, they strive every time and they keep finding every way to go better. But the question here is, are they happy with that? Why? Because they will always question themselves with, did I do well today? No, I could have done better. Are they happy with this statement? The obvious answer is no. When I face, when I stopped competing for basketball in my secondary school, I face the same situation. I find that there is no, I have to decentralize my life. I have to find a new focus point for me to grow continuously. But the blessed thing is that I did not lose the drive to, to progress and pushing myself. The only thing different is I have to refocus to a new platform. But the point come to here is where, where I again I hate with self-doubt. Then I started to think, should I always requesting myself to work until 11 a.m. or perhaps sometimes 12 a.m. midnight so that I could have saved my opportunity cost? However, when I come to a point that I talk to my father, that what is the purpose of you living in this life? Are you really pursuing something that a, mil a milestone, when you reach the milestone and you find that the milestone shift forward again and again every time? And I ask him about this. What is the purpose of life? And why do you ask me to improve myself constantly, daily, day to day? His answer is very simple. Son, the purpose of life has to, has to be discovered by you. And no one knows what is your purpose in this life. But by constantly improving yourself, the one thing you may find is you find the purpose, sorry, but when you are constantly improving yourself, one thing that could help, help you in life is you could explore more and more, widening your circle of competence. Because in essence, you do know what you do know. That means in life, we can only start to find our purpose of life when our circle of competence get widened and we know more, much and much more things. And this perhaps could help us to find the purpose of life. After I've heard of this, I went back home. I started to think about why does everyone have to work very hard? <laughs> All right. Why does everyone have to work very hard? I went to the library and you have 24 hours library. Actually, at 4 a.m. in the morning, one time. Wow. Wow. Well, the fun fact is, because I have a date at 8 a.m., so I have to finish my things before I date my girlfriend. Oh, That's the point. Mission possible. Come on. Thank you. The thing that I find is there is no purpose of people living so hard and just by working. A lot of people they try to pursue more and more things like CEO or perhaps after CEO it's like billionaire or perhaps billionaire is something. And this is some cloud that is cannot be caught, I would say. That you try to catch it, but every time you find that the, the, the cloud keep changing and keep changing when you grab it. Until a point that I went almost despair. I couldn't find any meaning in life, but I'm still told to improve myself day by day. I didn't know what, what's the purpose of improving myself day to day. And so I started to kind of like despair. I wouldn't say despair, but I went quite break down. I went broken, a little bit broken, and I asked myself, what do you want to achieve in this life? It's really self-improvement the thing that you want to achieve. What is the ultimate goal of all self-improvement? And the last thing is, I found it. The purpose for me in self-improvement is to create a value to the society. This value can differ from people to people. I don't know about you guys, 
But the ultimate purpose of self growth for me is to reach my final goal in life. And what is my final goal? I, I have seldom shared this to most of my friends, but the ultimate goal is to reduce the prosperity gap between the poor and prosper people. I think it's quite hard. And I Right, according to Adam Smith and Keynes' theory, this thing cannot be wow. this thing cannot be fulfilled because capitalism is there. But does that mean that we are needing to stop here? Does that mean that we need to be stopped by those theories and what other people tell you? I would say no. I love the quote by Stephen Stephen Charles. If you have no dream. What's the difference between you and a salted fish? <laughs> yes. I do know that it's very hard to achieve something that has been prophesied by Adam Smith and Keynes. However, as long as I still got the breath, I will try my very best to achieve it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Alan, for a very interesting speech about self-improvement paradox. Wow, I learned a lot from him and I learned a lot of English quotes from him. From Adam Smith, from Milton Keynes to Stephen Chow. That is utterly brilliant. In fact, the, it also helps me to think about think self-improvement in a different light. That is very important in our self in any one of us, everyone are built different. That's the essence here. Now, the second speaker for today's meeting is our Sergeant at Arms, Toastmaster Dean Cordier. Okay, Toastmaster Dean Cordier, he will be doing level one. <laughs> Evaluation and read back second speech. Okay, so I'd like to invite his evaluator, Postmaster Itifa, to read out the purpose statement to him. Okay, so the purpose is of this project is correctly apply feedback and serve as a speech evaluator during a class meeting. The purpose of this speech, the purpose of this speech is for the member to present a speech and receive feedback for the evaluation. Very important. Okay. So I assume that uh, I assume he provided you the feedback, right? The first speech somehow. Okay, good. Okay, thank you so much. Now, the title of his speech is "My Journey to Improvement," which is quite a fitting title for this project. "My Journey to Improvement." The Toastmaster Ding Puyet. "My Journey to Improvement." The stage is yours. Single Toastmaster of the evening. Your one is my culture. Yes. Oh, maybe I will just... Yeah, there's no way to fix it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's because... Uh, sorry to my trail side silence for now. Okay, I'll start my speech now. Hi. I have joined Toastbuster for almost one and a half years. And I tried to join Toastbuster is because a senior sharing sessions in my first years. <laughs> yes. It says to read, be an actuarist in futures. It's not just about your math skills and your analytical skills, but also some soft skills. What's the soft skill that we need? First, communication skills. Without communication skills, how can you say no? to the team members that actually extra hours. Wow. Wow. <laughs> the, second, <laughs> oops. the second thing is persuasive skills. Without persuasive skills, how can you persuade your team members and your boss about your ideas is the best and can fit to the project? With that, I think, you know, the senior say right. And in USD, how come can I join to improve their skills. Oops, no. So, <laughs> so I found uh, that, oh, that's a tough postmasters. And I wanted to wonderful my duty life. So I just try it as a postmaster to start my journey in here. The journey in postmaster, it should be smooth and easy, yet, that's a obstacle put by myself. 
due to my poor time management, I can, cannot cope with my subject and Toastmasters after a few months. So the consequence is I couldn't uh, finish my path within a year for just a level one speech. So I get a few months to write out a speech. And then almost every time I join the meeting, it just becomes a role players addresses another as a members to listen to others. After a few months of repeating for those meetings like that, I passionate to address the meeting because it's uh, starting to decrease. And Start to not come frequently. However, I would like just a drama. It must have twist pause. And then, oh. uh, during one day, I started under to prepare my professional papers. So I go to check the websites. I feel like, whoa, there's a paper. There's a high view rate, 80% view rate. Well, I'm scared of that. Why is there a paper that has so high view rate? So I go the Peters. The examiner brought have a comment to the candidate. They say that first, the candidate lack of communication skills. Oh, what? The second, the candidate lack of persuasive skills. Why is the professional papers? The reason is the candidate cannot use a simple and direct language to persuade the public what they want to deliver. I feel that, huh, you know the card I drew, I still can look to say others. My community skill is not, not strong. And what can I do to prove for the wall? Something I said, like, oh yeah, I totally forgot, I have joined both masters. Oh. <laughs> so, I try to be active again in post master club. <laughs> After that, after I become more active in Toastmasters, thanks to the Toastmaster members who is very supportive. For example, Joshua. Yeah. 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 Secondary schools or even my previous years. So, I have no experience and the show up and experience in my letters, give it and some experience of that. Secondly, Minka, oh, my previous presidents, he gave me a lot of motivation to me. <laughs> it's a very supportive process that always motivates me to come and feel that this meeting is so joyful. And last, also thanks to Kendall. Oh, and and last semester, I have forced to stay at home so that to avoid go for uh, a virtual meeting and kind of physicals, I usually do uh, <laughs> buy, yeah, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> we go to the MLC station to go back so that I can come to these physical meetings. Well, after this kind of journeys, I still learned a lot of things for this one and a half years. Beyond those presenting and speaking skills, some technical skills and some soft skills other than presenting also learned by me. For example, before that, I didn't touch before any cameras and microphones. <laughs> True, I didn't touch before. Because I just like photography, okay? But at here, I have a chance to learn. And also, I have the chance to kind of access for the one of the Christmas meeting. And besides that, some soft skills I've learned through this one up here is confidence. 
So Peter, it's very important. I still remember that the first time I joined this meeting, a few times, I think a few times of meetings, being a, being a role player, without a script, I can't speak of anything. I feel that as a timer, for example, as a timer, I have to say that as a timer, I want to count the time. I will remind the speakers the real the, uh, the remaining times of the break, break and <laughs> okay, break, 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 break. Um, but during that time, I can't speak up anything. So this that I am through for this one half years. In future, that's a huge journey that I have to go to improve, <laughs> improve my speech as uh, like more vocabulary than a lot of that. However, I think that the journey in Ghostbuster will not stop now, but because I have a lot of influence. Or in all, in conclusions, the journey past in Ghostbuster is very dry food, it's very memorable, and in the future, the Ghostbuster will be one of my platforms to build up my confidence, my presenting skills, and to grow more in conquer in future the job line. And I think that those of our members will left to give you a more memorable memories. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Ding Kunyet, for his lovely speech, My Journey to Improvement. He has shared a very touch, a uh, very detailed story on his journey being a Toastmasters from learning how to use microphone, from being a first timer, uh, time management, being a timer, and also confidence being a public speaker. So kudos to him and wish I wish you all the best in your Toastmaster journey, Toastmaster Ding Kun Yet. Now let's Let's cut to the chase. Our third speaker for this meeting is our Vice President, Member Shane. Oh, wow. Oh. I, actually, I'm very curious to know what's the DCP progress right now. <laughs> okay, don't no worry. You just get out of stage and answer. <laughs> Do you need 20? Uh, how much? Uh? Huh? How many? Uh? How many are the DCP goals? No, I'm talking about many members. Oh, machine. Oh, 20. Do you need 20? No, 19, almost 20. Uh. Oh, 19, almost 20. So one more to go uh, by the end of this month. Yeah. Uh, so we are planning to recruit three more new members. But your president distinguished, he can let go one, but. Because as a teacher, you really got six. Yeah. Months. But you must be 20 and above. Uh. Uh, you need that. Yeah. So all the best to you. Yeah. So as a vice president membership, he is taking the challenge by doing a level three persuasive speaking. So I hope you will always pay up to give more money. In. Okay, no problem. That his evaluator will be Toastmaster Kenneth. Toastmaster Kenneth, kindly read out the proper statement to Toastmaster Nicholas here. Ah. Ah, uh, okay. okay, so the purpose of this project is for you to understand the various parts of the persuasive speeches and deliver a persuasive speech at a club meeting. Persuade us in your confidence. Okay, oh. thank you so much, Hostmaster Kenner. So, I believe Toastmaster Nicholas is ready to persuade all of us and also future members to yes, please, 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 please. Okay, Toastmaster Nicholas, the title is Be Your Own Chef. <laughs> Be Your Own Chef, Toastmaster Nicholas. Oh, let's take this Long, long time ago. So, your side, your side. You want your side? Yes, I want to try. Oh, sorry, we don't know. Okay. Uh, can online audience say 
Long, long time ago, when I first stepped into University Malaya, I was staying in a college called the Trof Residential College. And may I ask you guys, how's the food over there in PK Trof? Very good. Good. <laughs> Tell me, uh, what's your favorite food there? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. okay, in my opinion, the food there is terrible. Wow. Wow. I don't even know why. Every day I go down there, it's either Western food or nasi jampo from the same store every day. The for the for the first year, uh, for the first two semesters where I'm staying in KK Chop, I eat the same thing almost every day and I gain weight and I was unhealthy. And I thought to myself, oh no, I'm only 73 kg, what should I do? Then when five months ago, five months ago, I moved out and I moved into a place in PJ. The place is dot 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 Samuel. And then Samuel. for information, <laughs> one of our members is staying with me. So taking care of him and also making sure that making sure that I enjoy my Christmas journey. <laughs> Over there, there are many facilities, gym, there are also swimming pool, there's also a mini market, but most importantly, there is a kitchen. There's a kitchen for me to be my own chef. <laughs> the reason I as the saying goes that you are what you eat, you are who you are. So I want to be my own chef and I want to dictate my food. I want to dictate what I put inside my body. And today I want to share with you one of my recipes. Samuel, I believe you have seen before. This is my recipe. Okay. This is my recipe. It's called tomato egg soup. As you can see, what is inside a tomato egg soup, you might ask me. Okay. Tomato soup, mushroom, egg, tofu, uh, chicken cube, and also some rice. No water. No water. No water. So, let me teach you how I cook this recipe. First and foremost, I started off with the tomatoes. I dice two tomatoes into cubes and I add the tomatoes inside a pot and a bit of water so that the tomato will break down and the flavors will emerge. Then, I add two bowls of water and this is where the flavors come in. I add the Mushroom, I add the tofu, I add the egg, and importantly, this this chicken cube, this is the one that gives the taste. MSG is not just MSG. Or, or scrambled egg or what? No, beaten egg. eggs. You beat the eggs and then you drop into the soup. You will beat using hanger or rotan. You can <laughs> use what you want. <laughs> but you can also use top sticks, or if you're a savage, you can use your hands. This is here and here. So this is what we call a tomato egg soup. And usually, I will pair it with a uh, with with rice because I also need carbohydrate. I'm a human. I need energy. Oh, that's not right. White rice, white rice, white rice. Nah, eco rice, eco brown, brown rice also can. But I choose white rice because I'm a student and I, don't, I still don't have enough money. <laughs> okay. Due to budget, okay. Due to budget, Now let me tell you why is it so important for us to be our own chef? As you can see, you know how much it cost me everything. This cost me less than five ringgit. One hundred ringgit. One thousand. Yeah. Five ringgit. This five ringgit can fit me for the entire day. Wow. What potato you use? Huh? What potato you use? Tomato. I use tomato. 
Uh, one kg around four ringgit only. I only mean, use two, two tomatoes. How much you know? It's only uh, 90 cents. This is only five ringgit and it can feed you for the whole day. So don't you think that being your own chef, cooking your own food, help you manage your money better? No time, uh, no time. No time. I'll get back to you later. <laughs> so other than that, what are the benefits of cooking? You can see here. Here, everything you add up is only 300 calories. Wow. Around 2 to 300 calories. Then you add rice, one, one bowl of rice is only 131 calories. You know how I know? I use an app. Wow. <laughs> and I calculate everything the whole meal, plus if you add outside dishes, it's only 600 calories. And then you know our BMR, our BMR basic metabolic rate, is, which is what we need the calories to function, is only 1,200 depends on your on your on your body. So around this, if you eat two of both, around 1,000 to 1,200, and you can some of you that you are full. So you can also contribute to your diet and losing your weight in the future. Hmm? Can you lose weight? I lose weight. As now I use five kg. Oh, wow. Five kg for five months. Okay. Wow. One month. Wow. Slow and steady, consistent, and everything is perfect. <laughs> As I heard the stuff someone say, no time. Uh. I tell you, no time is nothing. No time is not an excuse. You know what you should do? You should meal prep. Meal prep means that. Only one day out of the entire week, you choose Sunday. Sunday, you cook, and then you can cook for the next five days. Wow. You don't tell me you know time. You know time, then how can you go with your girlfriend dating? Huh? Ah. So in conclusion, I want you to be your own chef and dictate what you put inside your own mouth. And being a, your own chef, you can also have a healthy meal and enjoy your delicious and scrumptious okay. meal so that you will be a better and happy person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Nicholas, for yes, be your own chef. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. Um, yeah. Just a fun fact about myself is that I like to cook, so it's not the his speech is it's not directed to me now. It's directed to the likes of uh, directed to those members who are not explored in the world of cooking. And the interesting fact about the days when I was studying in Warray, the UK, is that the the on on campus accommodation always comes with kitchen, so. I was a bit surprised when I found out on campus accommodation in UM does not have any kitchen at all, which is quite shocking to me. That is pantry. Uh, pantry is not kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not, not kitchen. Anyway, I absolutely agree with this idea because it helps you to you have you have control on your own uh, calories and your know, vitamins and everything. You to control your own diet. And a uh, fun fact. For for those pasta Nicholas, uh, if you don't want to use chicken booty on, you can actually use buy a rotisserie ch chicken from a uh, Aeon or or Aeon. Uh, Aeon is quite common. You buy one piece of one piece of chicken, and you can use the chicken to put in your sandwiches. If you don't want, and the sauce you will put is optional. How much you want to put, you can control the sugar level from that. Then the the remains of the chicken, the carcasses, then you can boil together and make a nice mutton soup itself. Oh. Yeah, that's a tip for you, yeah? Okay. One piece of chicken can extend for weeks. Yeah. Okay. yeah. From soup stock to sandwiches to pasta, you can do everything. Yeah. Rotisserie chicken. Yeah. yeah, it's really easy, but it can last for yeah. one person for that long, yeah. Even the carcasses of chicken can be used to make soup, so that's the point here. Okay, uh, digression aside, now we go towards, now we are reached to the intermission of this meeting. So, of course, as in our tradition, we will have a photo session right now. 
Come, everyone, let's get on stage and have a photo taken. Thank you so much. Uh, SAA, may I start? Toastmaster Joshua, may I start? Yes, you may start. Yeah, thank you so much, Toastmaster Joshua. Now let's start with the... Uh, we're going to... The, we are moving on to the second section of this meeting will be the panel sessions. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So the one who's going to chair the panel session or as we call it, moderator for this panel session is Toastmaster Ray Tio from Jabil GBS Club. Uh, Toastmaster Jabil, will you talk like her, please? Okay, my that she's an online participant in this meeting. Is she in? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Toastmaster Ray Hi. So you will be Good doing a level five uh, project moderate a panel session with a title Brain Drain in Malaysia. Wow, I'm very interested in this topic, by the way. She will be evaluated by Toastmaster Vivian Fang, which is also from the same club as us. Toastmaster Vivian Fang, could you read out the proper statement to Toastmaster Rachel here? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Vivian, you can read out the purpose statement. Uh, purpose statement oh, okay. okay, sure. I'll be doing now. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, Toastmasters Rachel is attempting her dynamic leadership pathway level five. Moderate a panel discussion. So, the purpose of this project is for the member to apply his or her skill as a public speaker and later to facilitate a panel discussion. Time given 20 to 40 minutes and her speech title will be Brain Drain in Malaysia. So, all right, over to you, Toastmaster Rachel. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, uh, now, uh, for the purpose of all the audiences and uh, before she starts the speech, I'd like to make an announcement here. As the speech is between 20 to 40 minutes, the green light will be shown 20 minutes at 20 minute mark, amber light at 30 minute mark, and red light at 40 minute mark. Dear audience, and especially the timer, kindly be aware of this. Thank you so much. Now, Toastmaster Rachel, are you ready? Yes, I am. Thanks. I'm, I'm seeing I someone helping me to finished. share the screen, right? Yes, uh, are the panelists ready? Yes, I am ready. Help me uh, here. And uh, Toastmaster Jeffrey, can you spotlight all that, please? So, yeah, we have Calvin Atika. Okay, great, yeah. Julie. As well as Shafrida. Is everyone in? That's the four panelists and you, right, Rachel? Yes, everyone is in the room. The party okay. is ready. Are they, yeah. are they audible? Audible? Yep, yes. I, I'm audible. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you so much. All, all the participants here are audible. So, are you all? Are you guys ready? Good. Yes. Great. Yes. Now, sure. Let's get started. Brain drain in Malaysia. Brain drain in Malaysia. Ratio, Toastmaster ratio. The stage is yours. Thank you so much, Toastmasters. All right. Good evening, everyone. This is Rachel from JBLGBS Toastmasters Club. Today itself, as introduced, I'm going to talk about brain drain in Malaysia together with four panelists with very diverse background that I've managed to invite to join us in this evening. So before we start with the panel discussion, I would like to begin with sharing with everyone in the room on the timing allocation that we will have for this session. First, we will take around 10 minutes for you all to get to know all of us, our backgrounds, and we will move on to the core session which is responding to statements, Q&A and Ask Me Anything session, which we may take 15 to 25 minutes, depending on the responses in the room. We'll play by ear a little. 
And last but not least, we will end it with a closing or take simple questions if the timing allows. All right. So without further ado, can you please move on to the next slide for me, please? Okay, thank you so much. So over here, I have four panelists as mentioned, and each and every one of us have very diverse background. We are all coming from three different Toastmasters club, but I'm not going to introduce every single one of them because I think the best person to introduce themselves is the panelists themselves. So let's start with ladies first. Let's have Shafida help me, DTM, to take the stage. Thank you very much, Rachel. I'm Shafida. I'm actually from Renaissance Toastmasters Club. And uh, basically what I am doing right now, I'm actually a manager in Kananga Investment Bank, Malaysia, Burhat, and then um, as an end user services manager. So I, I actually uh, work on the three portfolios, which is asset management, uh, technologies, uh, which is end user side, and then um, the second one, uh, the third one is IT help desk. So basically, that's about it. That's you, Rachel. All right, cool. Thank you so much, Shafida. Moving on next, Calvin. I thought they did first. <laughs> no worries. You'll take okay. the second one since we are on the same pathway. All right. Okay. Second one is uh, yeah. My name is Calvin Chan. I'm from uh, Bukit Lugal Toastmasters Club, one of the club in uh, Penang Island. And uh, I run a social enterprise known as Green Hero. And what we do is basically we help Malaysia to reduce food waste by advocating for food rescue. Yeah. Back to you, Rachel. All right. Thank you so much, Kelvin. And thanks for willing to, to join me for being the rose among all the thorns. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the third speaker, which is my colleague, Julie Tan, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Julie. I'm from Jabil Toastmasters Club, same club with Rachel. And uh, I'm actually the senior IT manager for in Jabil Global Shared Services. So I'm taking care of an enterprise application. Some of you may know it's called SAP. So it's a ERP software to manage our end-to-end -end processes within our manufacturing industries. So I specialize in three areas in as in uh, asset management. Basically, uh, and basically, uh, maintaining of the plant uh, equipment in the factory, uh, quality management, and also EHSM, so environmental health and safety in product compliance. So it's a very niche area within the SAP application. So our team actually uh, manages the projects, roll roll out projects for all the sites globally and um, we implement these solutions to enable uh, our automation of processes in the system to make it more efficient. So that's what I do. Cool. Thank you so much, Julie. Last but not least, Atika, can we have you to introduce yourself as well? Thank you, Rachel. Hi, everyone. My name is Atika Haspula, uh, a recent graduate in the field of information technology. And currently, I'm serving as an IT license specialist in Jable. And while my role may not sound as glamorous as some others, I am deeply passionate about the impact technology has on our society and also economy. So today I look forward to sharing the insights and also my perspective on how we can address the challenge based on Rachel's title, uh, Brain Drain, and also harness the potential of Malaysia's um, talented workforce. Thank you, everyone. Back to you, Rachel. All right. Thank you so much, Atika. So over here, since all the panelists have already introduced themselves, so I, I do have questions for the floor over here. So if you guys would like to unmute yourself and speak, you may go ahead or you can actually type in the chat box over here so that I can have a look at what do you have for us as we go on to the discussions. All right. So let's move on to the next page. Uh, can you please help me to turn the screen to the next? Uh, oh, OK, cool. So the topic for today is actually brain drain. Actually, I do have a slide that I've added in, but it seems like it's not showing up after I got the help of 
someone from UM to share for me, but no worries about that. So quick introduction about myself. I'm also from Jabil GBS, specifically in the shared service office. And the areas, my subject matter expertise is actually in campus recruitment developing the internship program and management trainee program of JWGPS, specifically to the IT department. I do also help to develop simple low-code applications that are being used internally in our GBS community. And last but not least, events management. So in MNC companies, we do have a lot of events ongoing to engage the audience or the community in our office. And some of the events that we have are things like IT Town Hall, leadership submit. We do also celebrate festive seasons like Hari Raya, Chinese New Year, Dipavali, Christmas, and so on. So, all right, that's a little bit about me. And let's move on to this brain drain. Anybody in the room know what's the reason all of us actually come to a conclusion to collectively select this topic to talk about? Anyone from the room? I would like to hear from you guys. Oh, because, ah, sorry, Ming Kang? Yes. Ah, no joke. <laughs> no joke. All right. There's, no there's two short words to summarize it. Of talent in Asia. Mm -hmm. Of talent. Mm -hmm. The economic price of working overseas. Mm, yes, you are right. I think definitely all of you are very in tune with what's happening in our country and that's actually the reason why I invited this group of panelists to come and let's all talk about this topic and you guys got it right. Brain drain is actually substantial emigration of migration of individuals. It could be for better working opportunities, it could be for studies, or it could be simply because someone has uh, interracial marriages with someone who is overseas and not from the same country. So it depends. But today itself, we are going to focus more on the workforce area of things. All right. So uh, can you please help me to turn to the next slide? Thank you. And this is the current trend. Uh, facts being facts. Uh, this is not a report that I came out by myself, but it's actually something that you can easily search online. The sources is available over here. And it's very prominent that a lot of Malaysians currently are residing in other countries, Singapore being one of the neighbors down south, depending on where, where you are based in, uh, especially for us in northern region. Some of you, I believe you are from central region. And yep, Singapore is down south and a lot of our talents have been going over to Singapore to work. And based on the data over here, a lot of the categories that people have been going overseas to work are actually in the areas of skilled and semi-skilled areas in various industries. And also based on the results that could be seen over here, you can see that most of the people who tend to migrate to Singapore for work is mainly from three regions, Johor, Kedah, as well as Para. So this, this do speak about um, why certain people of the states move over there. And we are going to cover three main issues today. Can you please help me to please turn to the next slide? Thank you. All right, so today itself, since that's the current trend that we are having now is a current issue in Malaysia, the first issue that we are going to discuss today is greener pastures in other countries. I'm not going to read every single details that are being provided here, but I do have questions that all of us as the panelists actually sat down and compiled together during our discussions. So over here, I would like to I would like to point this question number one to Shafida. Do you think the weakening ringgit is actually the cause of brain drain in Malaysia? Or do you think that there is yeah. other reasons that oh, is yes. causing this issue, Shafida? Yeah, thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much for the questions. Well, basically, this is the main thing that people like actually looking at, right? Because our ringgit is actually not really helping much. But why these people actually going out to overseas and they got this piece of opportunity in overseas is just because of, um, it's just because that they, whenever they actually earn there, 
okay Let, let's say in uk okay in uk uh basically the lifestyle is actually the same okay almost the same they are actually from the commonwealth country uh the same things but what i'm actually trying to say is that uh whenever they uh they earn in this country whenever they bring back this money to malaysia they still have good value of that money for example i just uh, came back from uk for example uh it's 6.8 you just imagine whenever we pay money let's say i want to buy a coffee three pound 86 cent okay pence so i i pay how much okay so that is actually uh, one of the example if you buy an, a, a biryani for example it's actually 17 euro when i was in 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 amsterdam so when you calculate 5.15 just imagine because of that currency people have the ideas why not i take this and i actually uh provide the same skills but people are willing to take me okay so that is the reason why we opt for going to overseas and um you know just earned in there compared to the country to uh, compared uh, in the country we we still have that piece of money um and we can live i think more than enough if we actually um you know have that that kind of money compared to ringgit malaysia back to you rachel yeah thank you so much uh, shafida for sharing your input so i think i hear from you that you are you are taking uk as an example that a hey, dollar to dollar is actually a significant amount whereby one dollar in UK, you are able to afford this much, but in Malaysia, with the same amount of RM1, you can afford so much lesser as compared to over there, which is one of the main costs why yeah. people tend to go overseas. All right. So True. how about Julie? Do you do you have an, anything to add on on what Shafida has shared? Do you think it's it's really due to the dollar-to-dollar -dollar exchange rate itself or well, there's other more factors? Yeah, I think that, you know, from... You know, we've been hiring a lot of, I'm in the IT industry, we've been hiring a lot of interns to Jabil, you know, to attract them to try out, you know, working in Penang. Many of them, they, they come from, uh, they study in University of Tar, Penang, or the one in Kampar or in Satapak. And then we, our internship progress, you bring them in because you want them to really try working in Penang. And, you know, in Penang, we are, it's mostly on the industrial area, the manufacturing area. And now we have this global shared services hub being built within the confines of Penang you know, to attract the talent here. As much as we try, you can see that in terms of job opportunities, you can see a lot of it happening in Singapore. To me, Singapore, it's the New York of Asia, you have a lot of many types of industries. You no, know, they are they started with the banking financial industry, and now they have deviated into IT techno companies like Facebook, Amazon, and and it's so attractive because people are interested in the new. Artificial intelligence, network security. These are courses that students actually go into when they study degrees in IT. So when they come out of the job, right, they are looking for jobs in these areas. And there's so many opportunities in Singapore itself. And, you know, I think that is one of the main reasons that people are attracted there because they want to, everybody wants to grow. Everybody wants to do better in their life. And I see all those opportunities there. But nevertheless, we are trying so hard to retain the talent here in Penang, in KL. And we have a, and I see it as an opportunity to retain people to, to, to work in Penang, in Penang, in Malaysia. Because so many people run to Singapore, right? So and there's so there's scarcity of talent in Penang, and therefore it, there's a lot of opportunities if you want to grow in the IT sector in Malaysia. So I'm seeing it from a different perspective. Instead of seeing it as a brain drain, I'm seeing a really good opportunity 
because there's scarcity of talent, it makes it very attractive to retain yourself here in Malaysia. So, yeah, that's my point of view. Back wow. to you, Rachel. Thanks, Julie. I think this is definitely a fresh viewpoint. A lot of people just see brain drain, brain drain. But based on what you have said, retaining yourself as talent in Malaysia, you will be well sorted after because you are the only few ones remaining in Malaysia if you choose to stay. I think this is quite a good point of view over here. Thank you so much, Julie and Shapita, for your input. So maybe maybe let me let me have a follow-up questions on this. Uh, this I would like to direct to back to Shafida. Personally, why do you think countries like Singapore, Australia or wherever are popular destinations for Malaysia? They, there are still other countries like India, China, but why these countries are the typical popular ones? In your okay, uh, thank you, Rachel. I think when you talk about Singapore, Australia, US, Britain, Canada, they're actually um, having the similar lifestyle like Malaysia, right? And uh, on top of that, they are actually, most of them are actually a uh, commonwealth country, like Singapore, Australia, okay, US, yes, but uh, of course, most of the people from the US actually originated from Britain and as well from the Europe, okay? So they, they basically have this kind of uh, thoughts or similar thoughts about uh, how they're actually living their lifestyle and, and as well as Canada. Uh, Okay, so whenever the situation uh, in in the country, let's say not only Malaysia, let's say for the Indians, right? I mean, Indians came to Malaysia. They actually have a, have a lot of people working uh, from India in, uh, to Malaysia. The same things when we wanted to go to the country, we won't want to go to, to a country that we can have a better, stronger currency, I would say, right? And... Of course, like what Julie mentioned, the opportunity. For example, Malaysia need to create more opportunity because as I observe, I don't have a statistic, but as I observed, most of the graduates, they are still working on an e-healing. When I ask them, I go to the ground and ask them, why, uh, is there any reason why you do still do food panda? I, they say that I have a degree, but I couldn't be able to get a job. In fact, just want to let you know, my one of the, my interns texting me today and he asked me if I have a job to offer him. But too bad, my company right now, we don't offer this talent to come over. But uh, But this is actually one of the things that the creation of the opportunity uh, it's actually very essential, but but maybe some of the uh, situation doesn't permit these people to implement what they actually learned in the universities into the industry. So why I say the conclusion is this country is really a profitable country. Rachel, I went to Australia. I went to Perth, I think two years ago. And... I have few people, I have few young, young people that I communicate with them. Uh, there are actually few, uh, f few Malays. Okay. Coming there, you know what they, their job is? They pluck the. Oh, uh, the farming? Yeah. The orchard farming. <laughs> yes, orchard yeah, farming. Work and travel. Work and Correct. Travel program, Correct. I think. Yes. And I asked them, mm -hmm. what is your salary like? Mm -hmm. And they said that I can earn about 8,000 to 12,000 ringgit Malaysia in a month. Let's say if I'm, if I am, uh, uh, if they are so, have more time. It's like, okay, let's say I want to do a, a daytime and I will do e-hailing, like food panda, nighttime, grab food. So, you know, they can actually double up. So what? One of the person I asked, he said that he actually tried to do three shops in their village back in Malaysia. So every month they, he actually pay money to the father to build three shop lots. You just imagine. So, but he in the Australia, he just plucked 
the fruit and he can earn that much and bring that wealth to Malaysia. So that is actually in Perth, Australia. Yeah. So uh, there are lots of story. There are lots of story. I, I did not hear uh, those Indians. My friends, there are lots of Indians. My engineers who reported to me in previous company, they went abroad, Canada. Uh, but this is, these are the reasons because they want to earn more and their currency can give them wealth in that sense. And for Malaysians, some Malaysians, I would say, they tried, but they couldn't be able to get that. And at the same time, if they have the opportunity, the open up opportunity to get money from other country, then why not? These are the countries they actually uh, choose to, to implement whatever they learn uh, in the universities. Back to you, Rachel. Yeah, I understand that. Thank you so much, Shafida. So I think a lot of times we think currency is the only issue. It's definitely one of the issue. But at the same time, I think lifestyle is what's also very important and underrated element that should be looked into as well. All right. So I think panel, all of us panelists have been speaking for some time, maybe to those who are actually in the room and who are undergraduates. I would like to pick your minds a little. I'm just curious, which of this is actually more of your concern is it the currency or is it the lifestyle that is more of your concern can you please type in the chat and we'll move on to the next issue over here uh, for those can you please move on to the next slide for me thank you okay thank you so much lifestyle currency all right so i think opportunity oh that's a good one opportunity is also something that we have been talking about as we talk about singapore the opportunities of jobs available over there okay got it thank you so much everyone so let's look into the issue number two so over here it's low profit sharing so over here i actually read an article and it actually stated that one of the reasons uh why employees feel a little bit burnout and a little bit unwilling to work for a company is because of the lower profit margin that is being shared. So the average is actually just 25% of the revenue being shared. And I think a lot of people is, a lot of people globally, the average ratio is actually 40%. So you can see that there's actually 15% of difference over here. And this question, I would definitely need to point to the founder of Green Hero, Kelvin Chan. So do you think employees will be more likely to stay with a startup if let's say a higher profit margin sharing or equity is being provided to the employees do you think this could help all right thank you rachel for me uh i believe because for a startup environment is quite competitive it's a uh, fast changing so giving some shares to the uh, employee that's uh, one good way to keep them to retain them for longer term instead of having a high turnover we know startup always have a high turnover because of the new culture the turnover is like every three to four months so, so it's a good thing to have a uh, profit margin or even shares to retain them and uh, i would say another one would be in terms of our uh, work environment so uh, at the end even though we give them a higher profit if the work environment is not there I feel they will leave also. Like for me, last time there was a company where I worked with, uh, offered me when I my starting was about 2006 and then with increment continue. Then when I wanted to leave the company, the company offered me a, a higher pay of like 4,003 just to retain me. Oh. But oh. I didn't want to stay because of the environment. I could I didn't feel the support that I need and the environment, I don't feel any growth. Even though they paid me 4,003, I decided just to leave because the environment wasn't right. So at the end, I would say, yes, the money may be appealing, but how long can the person stay with the money that you're paying them if the environment is not good? So at the end, the environment that your employee works in is very important. So I believe, uh, in short, I would say environment is much more uh, suitable rather than uh, profit paying to them. Yeah, it's, profit is always short term, but environment will keep them long term. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I think, I think this is a good point. I think, Definitely, uh, it's like cherry on the top for profit to be given. But at the same time, environment, imagining spending eight hours a day at work in a toxic environment. I think by the time you go home with your family, you will just bring all the negative energy back. And I don't think that is something that we should be doing because work is such a big portion of our life. So question to the audience over here instead of the panelists, right? So just wondering if any of you have ever 
ever dream of working with a startup or even starting up your own startup actually? Yes. No, uh, yes. No. Starting my own business, of course. Okay. No, because it's too risky. So for for those who answer yes, I'm quite curious. What is your reason and what's your drive to have this intention to have a startup of your own? Can you please share it with us? Uh, the reason why I want to itchy hand to do a startup is because uh, the common similarity between all employers, they have the same trait that makes me feel disappointed. So I want to do the opposite of what they have been doing that let me down as an employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. Thank you so much for being honest. Do you mind? Do you mind specifying what trait is it that caused your disappointment? I'm quite curious about that. As Kelvin mentioned, uh, the toxic environment is, uh, maybe I'm just unlucky lah because all the organization that I've worked with contain some kind of toxic environment, didn't let the employee take part in decision making. So these are the two tricks that I will turn 180 degrees when I start up a company, which is to allow other people to take part in decision making and also create, cultivate that positive environment, which sounds simple, but most employees that I've worked with failed to do that. I understand that. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this. So I'm, I'm also quite curious one thing, back to you, Kelvin, on this. Is there actually, like personally as a founder yourself, if let's say you find uh, a very good business part, I wouldn't say partner, but a very good employee of yours, yours have been working together with you for a couple of years and you see the potential, good attributes, not really toxic, will you be willing to actually invite this person to perhaps become a company partner someday? I would say... Uh, yes, like for example, one, when I started my company, I actually need to find a designer working with me. So the designer needs to create a social calendar, posters and everything. So what I did back then was that I pay him a certain allowance. For every task he do, I pay him an allowance. And then soon I could see his potential in it and uh, and we both and we both really believe in what Green Hero is doing. So before I turned my company into Sanjum Bahad, I decided to invite him over and I told him that why not uh, let's team up together, set up a senior behind, and I appoint you as one of the shareholders where you have the voting rights, you have uh, you are able to make all the decision making, and whenever whenever the company makes profit, uh, you will get a certain pay as well, plus allowance. So yes, whenever I do see potential in them, I will get that team into uh, as a shareholder because in the future they can use that share, they can sell it to someone else who is willing to buy at a higher price. So yeah, and of course may, I may not be able to pay them market price right now, like maybe five or six thousand, but in the future when they sell that share to someone else who's willing to pay more, then that is their bonus. Yeah. yeah, who knows that may be of a greater value, right, in the future. Right. Yeah. right. It seems like when 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 you as a founder looking for a partner for your business, a lot of times I think you are looking for someone who could compliment you in the business. Am I right? Do correct me if I'm not. Yes, correct. Like my team, I have a designer, I have an accountant, I have a, I also have a, the uh, IT support, I also have operations, So I and I also have one business coach. So different different partners that I bring in will, will have different values to the business. Mm, yeah. I see. It seems like every, every single person is actually having their own subject matter expertise. Correct. Each yeah. of them. Yeah. All right, got it. I have a follow-up question because I'm actually looking in the comment section. I think this is Jeffrey writing, okay, yes, establishing a startup but not able due to no money. So, Kelvin, since you are a startup founder, right, what kind of advices would you provide for people who intend to have a startup but financially may be an issue for a start? Okay, uh, I'm actually publishing a book very soon so Jeffrey can get one. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I did, yeah, so that book is how to start a business. Uh, actually, I started Green Hero with just 200 ringgit. So 60 ringgit is where I go to SSM and register. First time register is 70 ringgit. 60 is to paperwork, 10 ringgit is to open your account. Then the balance all was that to do all the marketing things. That's why I got a marketing person to do all my my, my designer to design a poster on. So actually, to start a business nowadays, it's, there are so many available tools. It's free. You have Google Form to take in orders. You have WhatsApp to do marketing. You have Instagram to do story. You have Reels and TikTok to reach out to new audience. So today, to start a business, I would say it costs you nothing. 
it literally nothing and you and, and certain and there are times that people who do crowdfunding like for example you want to do fundraising you can even do a pre-order for t-shirt you can do a pre-order for lanyard all these when you do pre-order you collect orders and once you receive the payment then only you pay the supplier to do the materials so today it's very easy to start a business with no money at all so if you want to know more about this uh do buy my book when it's out. <laughs> yeah, very soon, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kevin. So I hope for those of you who intend to have a startup, but due to capital, it's not doing anything yet. I hope the message that Kelvin brings to you guys actually inspire. All right, for those who are helping me to control the site, can you please help me to move on to the next slide? Please, uh, next slide, please. Uh, next Okay, thank you so much. All right, so this is actually the last issue that we are going to discuss today itself. Issue number three, workers actually choosing to work in the gig economy over traditional 9 to 5. And I think during the discussion at the very start itself, Shafida has mentioned something relating to this in uh, her knowings working in Australia who are actually working in the work and travel program in the orchard area of things. So here, question number one. On this issue, which actually concerns you the most? Um, let's say if you are a fresh graduate, opportunities, snack the wedges of flexible working arrangement, and how would you like your employer to support you, your needs in this area? And this question itself, I would like to point to Atika since you're actually a fresh graduate who recently just converted to a permanent employee after your internship. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Um, so based on the question, right, considering uh, what concerns me the most among those three, which is opportunities, stagnant wages, or flexible working arrangement, actually my attention gravitates toward um, two things. First is the stagnant wages, and then uh, another one is the flexible working arrangements. My reason is that stagnant wages can be concerning because they can hinder uh, long-term financial stability and growth. And as an employee, I believe it's important to feel valued for the work that I do for, uh, the things that I contribute for, and both in terms of skill development and also financially. Therefore, I would appreciate um, the support from my employer in addressing the stagnant wages by maybe doing periodically reviewing and adjusting the compensation to reflect market trends and also based on individual performance. For uh, the flexible working arrangements, I think most of the people uh, know that the current issue is that people are talking about uh, maintaining a healthy work-life balance. So I would say uh, flexible working arrangements. It will accommodate to personal responsibilities, you know, with the evolving landscape of work that we have. And then having the option to work remotely or maybe adjust our working hours can greatly enhance productivity. And I would say job satisfaction, uh, the quality of uh, job. And then for this part, I think I really appreciate it if my employer can support my needs in this area, you know, by offering this flexibility or remote work opportunities and then to provide a clear communication channels because most, I think most of the time people are worried about uh, remote working is because they say then how will we contact how will we connect mm -hmm. so actually nowadays i think in the technology era we have a, you know we have so many things to choose from people even communicate using whatsapp even for work then we have this zoom meeting we have teams meeting so i would say if clear communication channels is provided it will ensure effective collaboration regardless of our physical location so that's why uh, even right now, we can collaborate with, you know, people from other areas, <laughs> even though we are yes. not together, but we are together virtually. So I would like to summarize it that um, while opportunities is also good for growth and also essential, but for me, addressing stagnant wages and 
offering flexible working arrangements are uh, key areas where I believe an employer can best support the needs of the current trends and also uh, to contribute to a more fulfilling work experience. Yep, I appreciate your input, Atika. So Atika is definitely one that is representing closest to those of you who are still undergraduates and will eventually get to the working environment for your internships or even your first job. So over here, I would like to invite a working mom to also provide her input on this. And if I may, Julie, can I please have you to share with us your thoughts on the questions that Atika has just answered as well? All right. Okay. Maybe I'm more of a, I don't know. I, maybe I, I have a different mindset on 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 this uh, working arrangement. I, when when we first go into the job market, right? I think for me the priority was a bit different. The thing was I really wanted to learn. I really wanted to learn as much as I could because I know I want to look at the really big picture. At the end of the day, what is the value that I can bring to the organization? When you first graduate, right, you might, we may come from like this uh, top best university, Stanford, uh, Harvard, MU, uh, NUS. When you come to a company, you know, your degrees are really great and it's like everybody will be wowed by it, right? But when you join the company, the first three to four months, wow. But after that, in your fifth month, people will start to ask, what values do you bring to the company? What makes you different from others? That's where the value generation is. So to me, getting a, a new job, being in a new job, you need to find your core competency. You need to find what makes you different and what makes you stand apart among the rest of the people. So what you want to find is you want to learn as much as you can. Dig deep, deep into what you're assigned to. The moment you find your core competency, right? Dig deep, deep and deep. Go wide. Find out how, how things work from end to end. So that when problems come, to, come at the table, right? People will come to find you. When, you are the, when they have problems, they find you. You are a problem solver a lot of opportunities will come up by itself. At the end of the day, the money will eventually come. So make priority, in my opinion, make priority, uh, make, uh, your, make yourself so valuable that the company cannot dispense you easily. That way, money will flow in and you will receive the compensation that you 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 are you you deserve, yeah. So that that is where that's how I see things. So the flexible working arrangement, yes, definitely. When you become a mom, when you when you get there, when you have issues on like maybe taking care of your kids, or you have a uh, when you reach my age when parents are getting old, you have to take care of them. Maybe they go to a hospital. The company will understand and. A good company is a company that will understand when you have parents that you need to take care of and they allow you the flexibility to work from home. And definitely, Jabil is one of them. I've seen that um, colleagues having parents who are you know, uh, having cancer and they have to stay back to look after the, their family. And in this company allows this flexibility to be there. So I think that itself, the flexible work arrangement based on the situational need, if the company is able to understand and um, accommodate that, that is a really great environment. But in return, we must also be able to bring value to the company so that the company, you know, it, it's like a give and take. Yeah, then um, I think that will work both ways very well. That's all. Agree. Thank you so much, uh, Julie, on this sharing. So, Kelvin and Shafida, do both of you have anything uh, to add on to this? I really like the part that Julie shared about give and take because what she has shared is also what I've experienced personally. I, I do have a sick parent last year in May itself and my boss with clear justification actually allowed me to work from home for 
I believe 30 to 45 days because of that. But I still keep up uh, with my work. I still check in my emails on a daily basis. But it's just the expectations on me to be present physically in the office is being permitted or it's being excused because of that. Yep. So Shafida and Kelvin, do you both have anything to add on to this question one before I move on to the very last question of the day? Oh, okay, so Rachel, uh, maybe Kelvin, I start first. <laughs> By the way, uh, I actually like uh, the concept and the understanding of what Kelvin also mentioned just now from the previous one. I just want to state that because uh, normally for the startup, people are, are, are not that generous, okay? They, they are not really been sharing in terms of uh, this em environment uh, for Malaysia. But I think maybe the new generation they think differently right uh okay so that is actually things that i would like to put but about these questions one i actually agree um what uh julia has mentioned is actually the growth in our company uh who is determined who we are as, especially if we take pride with our job that's number one when we do our job very good properly and with all the pride that we can take so definitely the visibility is there, right, Rachel? Doesn't matter if you are given the opportunity working for the working arrangement, working from home, but as long as you can deliver well with your job, mm -hmm. definitely people will see the results, the value that you are actually bringing to the table, to your boss, okay, and also to your colleagues. That's that is very important factors, and definitely who wants who don't who wants to stay with the stagnant wages? If possible, we want to go. To, for the growth, right? But def but in some occasion, we have to wait because if there is no other opportunity, we need to bring the money for the family, right? So stagnant wages is something that you have to think of, like what um, Atika mentioned. If there is prolonged, you might want to improve yourself and seeing other opportunity that can be given to us. All right. Back to you, Rachel. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, Shafida. And timer, yes, I do see the time. So due to time constraints, I think this wonderful conversation has to come to an end. Thank you so much for listening. I hope all of you are able to get holistic view from people of very different backgrounds in our sharing and in our viewpoints. And back to you, Toastmasters of the evening. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, all the panelists, for participating in this with me. Uh, I leave the uh, lights on, but lights on, please. All right. Oh, see, I'm this light. Okay. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Rachel and the team of panelists for a very insightful uh, panel session on brain drain in Malaysia. Now I realize we have learned a lot of things. For one, brain drain issue is not a, just a single issue not just the currency issues, it's actually a multifaceted issue indeed. I hope everyone in, who are attending this meeting tonight has learned a thing or two from this panel session. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Rachel, for moderating this session once again. Now, we have arrived to the third, which is the final session of this meeting, which is known as the, oh, before that, sorry, uh, like to call for the work of the best speaker. Uh, so, uh, S A S A A or uh, whoever is in charge. Can yes. Uh, all right. So I will now share a QR code for everyone to go to Slido and vote for the best speaker. You may also go to sli.do slash umtmc to vote for the best speaker as well. So let me repeat the link. It is sli.do forward slash umtfc, all in small letters for those who can't scan it properly, including me, I feel like scanning.
So far, there is 16 people who have voted. Now, 17. Or you want to give more time for that? Uh, maybe you can continue on with the next session while uh, those who are voting can still continue to vote. Okay, thank you so much, Ghostbuster Joshua. Now, let us move forward to the evaluation session, the most exciting session of this meeting. I mean, every Ghostbusters meeting, whereby all the members who are making a speech and anyone's attending meeting will get a proper and for formal feedback from the respective evaluators and general evaluators, respectively. So I'd like to begin by calling in our general evaluator, Postmaster Ralph Mellon, who is right here in the street, to begin this begin the evaluation session. Postmaster Ralph, the floor is yours. Thank you, Toastmaster of the evening or Toastmaster of the day, Jero Wan Yu. Good. This has been a very, very, very long meeting. I reserve my summary later. Without uh, spending much time, I would like to call upon the first. I'll do the evaluation. The first, did you start with the uh, the the prepared speeches first, right, yes. guys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll call upon the first speaker. The first speaker is who? The first speaker was Alvin Chan, and his evaluator is Zakwan Rafiq. Well, Zaf, Zaf, Zakwan Rafiq, please give his first evaluation. Zakwan, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm okay, speak. thank you. All right, so I'll start my evaluation session. Evaluation for Alvin. Alvin? Um, wow, uh, I just want to ask one question. Are you, how long were you a member? Uh, three months. Three months, wow, you sound like a seasoned speaker, man. Like, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I didn't realize that. And, and um, I really like your topic, your speech topic. It was really relatable as everyone here as a student. We go through life, uh, like we just want to figure things out. We don't know what is our purpose in life. So you really, really uh, share your story uh, with us, which is really good so that uh, the audience can really connect with you. And uh, you bring us into your journey, uh, your story when you said uh, you join basketball, then you stop competing. You uh, go to it. You want to find a new platform. I, I bet like every one of us as students, we also want to try new things in life, right? So... Uh, you really, uh, it draws attention to uh, the audience as well, where um, you mentioned uh, this one part where you had a dialogue with your dad, uh, where your dad asked you, son, what's the purpose of your life? Then you ask, uh, he, he, he told you that you need to discover yourself. So it really gives a really good message to uh, the audience, which I really like. And the second part is your, your humor. Man, I didn't know that I saw you. I didn't know that you were quite funny. But when I I heard your speech, uh, you you have a quite natural flow on uh, giving your speech in a very humorous way. One uh, memorable moment was that during your quote on Stephen Chow, right? If I'm not mistaken, when you say when you have no dream, your life is no different different from a salted fish. Yeah, um, I guess like all, all the all the audience will re uh, laugh into it. And I guess this is one of the best ways to retain audience engagement, uh, which is to inject humor. And uh, you really uh, leverage on using code because your speech is full of quotes. Would, would all the audience agree? There's multiple quotes from uh, many examples I couldn't, couldn't recall, but you really use make use of that quote into a humor, which is amazing. All right, now on to the best part, which is, uh, if I may suggest, 
uh, one room of improvement is that your body language. So uh, when you speak, I notice that most of the time you are so centered here. I guess you can use the speech uh, speech uh, and more efficiently just uh, walk around and um, maybe uh, during you, uh, your moment on sharing your personal stories, like you play basketball or you have a date, right? You were, you can act it out like, oh, now it's 4 a.m. Uh, I have a date at 8 a.m. So, so you can actually express your feelings towards acting out so that we as audience are more engaged into it. Okay. Um, then for the second part, which is speech organization, uh, you can pace yourself. You uh, maybe you can focus on one story, one main story, then you can elaborate into it. Because we found it is very hard to uh, follow all your stories. I know you are excited, but it's, it's a lot easier if you have one main idea, then you can break it down uh, into uh, smaller stories. So just to recap, uh, one, great topic, good topic. And second one, humor, keep it up. Uh, maybe in the next uh, speech, you want to improve on your expressive open body language and also a well-structured speech. That's all from me. Thank you. Lakwan, if I may just suggest, you had all the uh, qualities of an evaluator, but I shouldn't say but, but anyway. The point for improvement for you, Zakwan, is just keep it to three good points, two points for improvement, and then the summary. Don't go all around the world. Okay? You have you have you have not structured your evaluation. Good points, but you went all over the place. So next time when you give an evaluation, give three good points, two points for improvement. And your summary. Now I call upon the second second evaluator. The second evaluator is. Shall I ask Jason to do a Zakwan's uh, evaluation? The uh, next next one is Iktifa. Okay, so Kunyat's uh, evaluator is my favorite Iktifa. Iktifa. Uh, uh, when you come up and you're talking about your journey in Toastmasters, it reminds me of my own personal journey. Where in the first year, I was scrambling to finish out my first pathway, which I did. So, yeah. But then, uh, yeah, I finished my first pathway. To summarize your speech and also to improve it further, what I like to do is firstly, I like to take two points from our previous simulator, which is number one, the usage of space. You have a big space, you have a big stage, but I see that you only stand here and you only talk in the center. You didn't go around the stage, right? Let's say, for example, when you're talking about your time in degree, you can use this part of the stage and talk like during my degree time, a senior told me that. There's two important things that I have to do. One is to improve my social skills and also to improve my communication skills. And after that, during when I was trying to take my professional paper, the examiner remind me these two skills again, which is uh, communication and also persuasive skills. And lastly, over here, you can do a conclusion. So you really use up the stage and people can follow your direction of movement easily. And this is so will improve your flow of uh, of your speech, right? And one more thing I, I want to comment is your hands. Because I see, right, your effort stand is like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, if they say, for example, right, when your effort stand is like this, right, and you only use one hand to talk, right, what do you think that audience might think of you? That do you portray a friendly mode or an arrogant mode? So it's better for you to use two hands to welcome and embrace the audience into your speech. Right? What I like about your speech is, one more last point I like about your speech is, you keep on repeating the message over your speech, which is to improve the reasons why you join Toastmasters, which is to improve your skills, your, your soft skills. And this is being reminded, like every three minutes or four minutes, it's being reminded in your speech. And one rule of improvement is 
maybe you can just keep your story short and instead of like saying that you join those masters and you are happy to rejoin because of three people when it's Joshua, Minka and Kenneth, you can always see that story for another day. And you can elaborate more depth of the story in another speech, which is being a mentor. Yes. Mentor. Yeah. So instead of like cramping everything to one speech, right? You can divide and people will be happy to know more about your journey with those masters. All right? Yeah, that's my three good points and also one point one point of improvement to you again. All in all, you did a very good job. Go ahead and finish your speech or your, your projects in one in the next year, or you can the next three months of the remaining term. <laughs> <laughs> and have fun while doing it. Thank you, Tifa. Thank you very much. I cannot see you, but hi to you anyway. That was that was well done. You see, he came up there, he gave three good points. He didn't go around. Three good points, room for improvement, and then he summarized it. That's very well done. Thank you, Tifa. The next person is Nicholas, and then Nicholas's evaluator is Kenneth Cobb. You there, Kenneth? 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 Uh, what happened? What happened? Yeah, we just did. Yes, Why? Why? Did you send to me? Oh, okay. Who did you send? You. Ah. 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 Uh, yeah. technical issues right now, as Kenneth has something to share. I just share to... Can I share to Jeffrey and Jeffrey share it? Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Is it the question? Okay. No, not slide, not slide. I also shared to Joshua, so whoever that's fast, they share. <laughs> okay. Is Kenneth there? Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm going to share his screen. Ah, okay. Okay, uh, can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay, you can click on Nicholas Leung. Okay. Okay, then uh, open the set for strength and improvement. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> okay, Nicholas. Well done, as you have persuaded me to cook instead of dating with my girl. <laughs> okay, you have hit. Uh, not mine, but I think it's our same point. Yeah, undeniably, according to facts, outside food is unhealthy and it's very expensive. So cooking is healthier and safer, which hits our pain point. Next, you share across a story with differing opinions. Everyone thought cooking child food is very delicious with Western food. But then, with unexpected you show us a twist. No, Kenyan child food is not delicious. <laughs> See the difference? And you are a walking testimony to yourself. You provided your own stories, your own success stories to persuade others to join you in your own success story in chatting. <laughs> to make your switch better and to achieve your wish world championship title, <laughs> I will do improvement for you. So, first of all, you can share the video of you cooking, of the price list listed down, the ingredients, and the calories list of all the ingredients. Because for some person, especially the C type, the uh, consideration type they seem to believe. It must accompany it with facts and figures 
Kalau site itu ada lagi. Kalau yang mampu presentation lah. Yang yang presentation lah. I suggest you to put in some citations. <laughs> Convince more people as they see the facts and figures and they can believe better. Next, you can also you can also share the common points that restrains people from cooking. For example, no time. And you can persuade them. Why? Even though you have no time, but you can still cook as usual. In conclusion, provide more facts and figures, and congratulations that you have hit the pain point of all our art as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kenneth. This is a very, very new form of uh, evaluation for me. <laughs> Normally, evaluations are done by the person verbally, right? But anyhow, something new for me to learn. So did, did uh, Kunyat, no, sorry, did Nicholas meet his project purpose? That's the question, yeah? Remember, the purpose for you to do the speech is for you to do a speech based on the project purpose. Right? So if you do not mention it, then you have not completed your evaluation. Or you do not know where the speaker stands. Well done. You took all the trouble to come out with a format for your evaluation. That's new to me. But anyhow, I would suggest that you do a personal speech as an evaluation. So the fourth speaker is actually uh, evaluation on an evaluation. Right, am I right? Yes. yes. Yeah, so it's Zakwan's evaluator is, Zakwan's evaluator is Jason. Right, Jason? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much, General Evaluator Raf. As an evaluator, a first-timer evaluator, if I were a speaker, I would have preferred or choose someone to be my evaluator. Why? Personally speaking, when I was listening at the site, actually I felt like he was very helpful and friendly. Evaluation is giving examples or suggestions for improvement, but one of the underlying factors, in my personal opinion, the evaluator has also got to be encouraging. And I believe Zakwan was encouraging. There are two factors that I would like to highlight about what he did well as an evaluator, first timer today. Zakwan, two things that Zakwan did well. Number one, he was motivating with details. He mentioned two aspects of what speaker Alvin did well. He said, Alvin, I didn't know you were just a three month old Toastmaster. I was very impressed. It sounds like he feel that you are a seasoned speaker. So. Whether you like it or not, as a personal opinion, I feel that that is a very encouraging point, whether to beginner or seasoned speaker. The second area that Zakwan did well as a first-time evaluator and upcoming more to come is demonstrating how. This is one aspect that I see most evaluators lacking in. They will tell you what and maybe why, but it's very difficult for evaluators to demonstrate how. In which way did he demonstrate? He acted out one part of the potential characterization aspect of Alvin's story here. Apart from that, he also used the main stage and actually moved around to show that Alvin could actually use a bigger area of the stage, which I totally agree with. These are two good aspects. Sakwan, if I may suggest you two things to look into in your next evaluation and also for everyone else, is two S's. Number one, structure which what Mr. General Evaluator actually suggested as well. I would like to add on to say that having a structure in a speech is important. Having a structure in an evaluation speech is equally important, even though it's only three minutes. So I would like to suggest how to add more structure, which is to use landmarks. For example, there are two things that I like about your speech. Number one, A. Number two, 
B. Then you move on, we elaborate as so and so forth. There are two things that I would like to encourage you to work on. C, elaborate. D, elaborate. And in summary, keep working on A and B, try out C and D. So using landmarks, you can actually help not only the speaker, but the audience to follow easily. The other S is speak, not only to Alvin, but to the whole audience. Evaluation is supposed to be a coexistence learning, not only for Alvin, but also for me and all the other members of this club. So when you speak and deliver your evaluation speech, speak to the audience. Overall, very friendly, motivating evaluation. Keep on being the friendly evaluator, showing the how, and try having landmarks to show where you are at your evaluation. Plus, speak, always speak to everyone in the audience. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Jason, that was a very good piece of evaluation. But can I have the time, please? For the, evalu the, the evaluators? Uh, we have one more evaluator for yeah, Rachel. That, yeah, I know. There's one more. Vivian, right? But anyway, uh, let me just say, Jason, you did a good job. You touched on all the aspects of an evaluator. And I do agree. You, you had the flow of an evaluator. Well done. Very good encouragement to... Exactly. Well, let's call upon Vivian for Rachel Tan's evaluation. Vivian? Thank you, uh, Mr. G.E. Raft. Right. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, dear friends, and Rachel. It was an energetic, enthusiastic, and enthralling session. I love the way you had moderated this panelist session. What I really love about the session was a powerful opening. You provide a very strong opening when you started off with the welcome message and introduce the context for the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very important because that's where the moderator will set the tone and energy. This shows us that Rachel is ensuring that everyone is coordinated beforehand with the panelists in advance. And the second thing that I really like the most is the engaging questions. Starting by engaging the audience and letting us know what we should expect from the panel. And also let us to see why does it important and relevant to us. Rachel, I love the way you inquire a little bit more on what panelists just said and ask that follow up questions to go deeper. So throughout the session, you ask an open-ended questions instead of one that could be answered yes or no and allow the panelists to share their expertise. So you are doing well in keeping track of time as well and respectfully return the conversation to the next panelist. It was very well done. Rachel, you also pay attention to what the panelists or the audience had just said and bridge it through from where you want to go to the another panelist. This is to ensure everyone's feel included. That was a powerful technique to make sure every one of us was connected. So Rachel, what do you want to make to establish a better connection with the audience? Please allow me to share my one humble suggestion. Probably you may consider to close with impact by listing the takeaways and share that, share that to us. Why does it important? critical and why does it relate to us? So for example, after you have concluded the panel discussion, you might want to provide the audience with a quick summary of the discussion that took place. So from there, that's where we started to integrate with everything from what we see, what we hear and what we feel from the panelist session itself. So in conclusion, that was a wonderful session, powerful opening, engaging questions and I believe when you can post a powerful closing it will be better in the session. All right, thank you. Over to you, Mr. G. Thank you. Vivian, thank you very much. Yes, I agree with whatever she said on the uh, evaluation for Rachel. It was a very well done. 
the call. Very well done. Session. Yes. I'm really very tired. It's a long session today from yeah. Anyways, yeah. Now let me come to the uh, summary of this whole meeting. First of all, the meeting started on time. I liked it. It's nice. But there was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of confusion. I see a lot of confusion in the beginning. You know, setting up the stage, you know, for a hybrid, right? It's good to have a hybrid. Well done. I also can see that the stage is set very far away for me as a as a virtual audience or virtual role player. I couldn't see or make up the uh, the participant or the role player as well as I could not hear clearly. I've been to so many hybrids, but just feedback to you is. Your stage is placed very far away. You don't have to have such a distance. That's what I'm saying. And that your agenda for the day is so very confusing. Yeah, I think I mentioned this to Jiwan, right? I did. But I think most probably I might just give you an example. It's not, it's not a Bible, right? It's just an example for you to follow. Here, this it's all over the place, yeah? If I were to just take this and read, I don't know where I am. Okay. Overall, I've already given you my piece of summary, but I would like to call upon the grammarian. The grammarian is Chi Shir. We shall have a voting session first. Oh, you want to have a voting session first? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So uh, everyone can go back to the same web, web page sli.do slash umtmc to vote for the best evaluator or uh, let me share my screen you can scan this QR code and vote for the best evaluator as well Okay, I think may continue now for now, G. Okay, thank you. Yeah, can I have the grammarian's report, please? T, sure. Sure. Mr. Madam General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters and guests, my report is for the word of the evening. Can you mention one time, article mention one time, in correct pronunciation, mental, mental, commenting? Don't tell me you have no time, don't tell me that you have no time. Alvin, if you have no dreams, what's the what is the difference between you and a sort of fish? People in Kunye, all in all, virtual field greener transfers come to an end. That is all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, teacher. Now I'd like to call upon the accountant, Jeffrey. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. J. A. Good evening once again, everyone. Here's my accountant's report. Congratulations to the general evaluator Ralph, Kenneth, and Jason for having no speech scratches for tonight's meeting. First of all, for Grace, our 
timer for tonight's meeting, she had one a uh, Elvin repeated words such as I was when you no longer a milestone and the I have all repeated twice. For Kunyet, he had two us, four souls, and repeated words. All in all, in conclusion, I felt that he could he should have only used one, either all in all or in conclusion. For Toastmaster Yu Meng, he had one er, one soul, inappropriate interjections, you know, yeah. For Toastmaster Nicholas, he had four us, two souls, and repeated words, and twice with twice. And for Toastmaster Rachel, she had one soul. For Distinguished Toastmaster Shafida, she had four er and one um. And inappropriate interjection, you know. For Kelvin, he had three us and one soul. For Julie, she had three us, four ums, and four souls. Inappropriate interjections, you know, three times. And for Atika, she had two us and inappropriate interjection, you know, once. For Zakwan, he had more than 10 us and two souls. And for Ikifa, he had two us, two and three souls, repeated words I twice, and inappropriate, inappropriate interjections, yeah, once, right, once. And for Vivian, she had two souls. That's all from me. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. GE. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. It was a well done report. Next, I would like to call upon a timer. Timer is Grace, Grace Van. Hi, everyone. Uh, I will report the time of the speaker. Uh, Elvin, he uses uh, 7 minutes and 38, 38 seconds, over spend 8 seconds. Uh, in in Kuenye, he uses eight, 8 minutes and 20 seconds, over spend 50 seconds. And Nicholas, he uses uh, seven minutes and 40, 40 seconds. Uh, over spend 10 seconds. And Richard, 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 she spent uh, 43 minutes and 20 seconds. Over spend two minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, Zawa, he spent uh, three minutes and 50 seconds uh, over spend 20 seconds. And it's back, he uses uh, three, three minutes and 10 seconds. Can, can, not, can not he uses two minutes and 35 seconds. With that, he, uh, she used two minutes and uh, 48 seconds. And Jason, he uses two minutes and uh, 27 seconds. Cheryl, she uses uh, 47 seconds. Uh, Understand 43 seconds. And Jeffrey, he uses one minute and 40 seconds. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much. The role players for the the grammarian timer and also the accountant. Well done. Like to just give three inputs here. I would like you all to prepare your stage before you start the meeting. One. Number two is make sure the camera is, is make sure the stage is very much visible to the people who are online. Three, just make sure that the agenda is clear. If you need any help, I can help you on that. Or Tifar can help you. He has seen enough agendas. Yeah, and they don't laugh. <laughs> I'm not very serious, OK? Guys, yeah, overall, the meeting is very well done. One more additional thing. If you want to have a panel discussion, please do not have too many speakers, yeah? Too many speeches, it tracks the meeting. It's always good to make it sweet and short, or short and sweet. That is two hours. A panel, when you have a panel, panel discussion like this, have one or two speakers. 
will do. So your, your, your timing will not drag on. Okay, guys? Agree? I just yeah. added my feedback, okay? Because yeah. look at this. It's gone up to no, close to 10.30 already. Yeah? Otherwise, well done, guys. Very good. The, the camaraderie is fantastic. I can see the movement of all of you trying to help each other. A lot of jokes. I wish I was there physically. You know, you know, you guys are in the road where it's always, always gender. Next time, if you, if you call me next time, I'll be there physically. Well done. Good night. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, General Evaluator, for the kind feedback and, of course, most importantly, the team of evaluators accompanying him, providing feedback to all our members involved throughout this meeting. So, so and now here comes the award ceremony. Mm, interesting. Now is the part where we acknowledge who is the best project speaker, uh, which is the first thing that I have in mind. The best project speaker is. Is Rachel Toastmaster Rachel Leo? So Toastmaster Rachel Leo, uh, will you come let's take a photo? Uh, Jane Toastmaster Jane. Jane, Jane. Jeffrey, uh, okay, okay, one person only, yeah. Okay, okay. In three, two, one. Sorry, the third I'll do later. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. The next award goes to the best evaluator. Wow. I'm at multiple roles right now. I'm flattered. <laughs> okay, the best evaluator is Toastmaster Jason Tong. Sorry. For now, it's this one. Okay, one, two, okay. Okay, that concludes the uh, before I conclude this award ceremony, there's always the most important one is an appreciation to the general evaluator, Toastmaster Ralph Menon. Hi, Toastmaster, thank you so much. Toastmaster Ralph is in three, two, one. Thank you. Uh, later, I'll pass. I'll do. I'll pass the set to the GE and all the award winners. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you so much. So my job as postmaster evening concludes now. Uh, it's been a year. I didn't do that, which is quite achievement. I now I will pass the floor back to our presiding officer for this meeting, postmaster Jane. Our president. Okay, thank you so much for the performances of the evening. So, first thing first, I would like to congratulate TMC for achieving Select Distinguished Club. What is that? What is better is that we are only one more go away from President's Distinguished Cup. <laughs> and I think next week we could achieve that. <laughs> okay, and next thing is next week we have a hybrid meeting as usual. And next next week we will have a fully physical meeting. <laughs> Here, we are coming here physically, and April. <laughs> and our division contest is happening on this Saturday, twenty third March, nine a.m. to one p.m. at Prisma FGV. 
Anniversary. Anniversary. Okay. Anniversary. Uh, I was thinking to have an anniversary treat. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. 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 Min Kang say he wants to do a humorous speech and table topic on that. Humorous speech. Oh, okay. I was about to Okay. And I hope all of you will join. And what else? Oh, t-shirt. Where is my t-shirt? Okay. So we are having. We will be doing a UFMC t-shirt as well. And details will be sent by our SAA later. Okay. And just congratulations, congratulations to our SKA for completing level one. Oh, okay. Okay, what else? Nothing else? Okay. But I think that I will mark this meeting. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.